Welcome to the Metal Voice today on this show. Accept top 10 albums of all time with me once again, Mr. Giles Lavery. What's going on, my friend? Hey, Jimmy, it's your Confederate brother. What's happening, man? General Lee <laughs> Lavery. Hell yeah. I'll tell you what. We're here to talk Accept. So this is what we're going to do. We're not going to do the top 10 albums of Accept. We're going to do my top five albums and your top five albums. That'll be a total of 10. And that's what we're going to do. How's that? How does that sound? Works for me, man. Works for me. All right, we'll start off right off the bat. My number five would be Stalingrad, the album right after Blood of the Nations. By Accept, Mark Tornillo is the new vocalist, and he fits like a glove on this second album. It's fierce, it's aggressive, it's fast. And it's it just, you know, it, from start to finish, like I always say, very solid album. Uh, that's my number five. What's your number five, Giles? Oh, dude, number five. Well, I'm going to have to echo you there, dude. Stalingrad, it's got to be. What a great album. Uh, I, I didn't I didn't care so much for Blood of the Nations. I didn't Personally, I didn't quite see what the fuss was about. But with Stalingrad, I thought that was a fantastic record. That's my number five except album. So we're tied so far. Number four for myself. Get ready, folks. We're going back to Mark Ternillo's years. We're going to the new second wave, or the second wave of Accept. We're talking about Blind Rage. Yes, I have ranted and raved about this album for a whole year. It was our top album of the year. I just think this is a, such a well-rounded uh, album. You know, Andy Schneep, once again, at the knobs. It just, you know, it's good. The hard tracks, the fast tracks, the melodic tracks, the fun tracks, the gang vocals, everything you love about Except on this album. So for me, number four, Blind Rage. And I'd like to also mention it was the first time Except has hit the charts in number one in Germany and also in Finland. What about you, Giles? Me? Well, I'm going in a slightly opposite direction than you there, Jimmy. I'm going to pick Russian Roulette Ooh. as my number four album. Great, uh, great melodic songs. A lot of, you know, it was a, it was a step in a, at the time, slightly more commercial direction, uh, which they were hinting at with Metal Heart. But I really love it. There's some really memorable, catchy hooks on this record, and that's why I pick Russian Roulette. Number three for myself, and this was the album right when they started having, uh, you know, their first uh, taste of success, Restless and Wild. Hi, ni, hi, no, hi, na. That's all I'm going to tell you, Giles. Hi, ni, hi, no, hi, na. Uh, fast as a shark. I mean, the, 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 the beginning of speed metal, some would say, or thrash metal. Uh, Princess of the Dawn, Neon Knights, it's all there. It's Accept really starting to take off. And it's probably the first album where Gabby Hoffman, uh, also known as Diffie at the time, uh, started writing the lyrics for the band. And it started making more sense. What about you? What do you have for number three? Well, you know what, Jimmy? Number three, I'm going to be a little bit unorthodox here. And, oh, no. Um, I'm not sure if this is allowed, but I, I am going to pick Restless and Wild and Balls to the Wall okay. as, my, as, my, as my number three. Right. There is a compilation out there yes. that has both, both albums on one CD, minus like three songs, so yes. maybe I could pick that. But really, I'm picking Restless and Wild and Balls to the Wall. They are inseparable. They are like brother and sister. I, I, can't, you know, I can't draw a distinction. So that's my number three. I think they were, they really put the stamp on, you know, on the world of German metal. They were, they stood out a mile, you know, quality wise amongst all the, you know, a lot of other German bands that were, you know, around at the time. The songwriting was sure. phenomenal. The guitar playing's phenomenal. Um, just absolutely fantastic, those two records. Love them. Beautiful. That's my number three. Number two, Breaker. It came out in 1981. It was a breaker of an album. Judo Dirk and Schneider said that he broke so many microphones during the recording process of the album because he was so mad. This album is a retaliation against the record companies at the time for trying to make them into this commercial sort of outfit. Uh, killer tracks such as Starlight, Breaker, Midnight Highway, Can't Stand the Night, and of course Son of the Bitch, which they had to change the lyrics because it was too controversial at the time. What do you got for number two? Number two, uh, I got Metal Heart. I love, I love that. I love that. Except was stretching musically. At this point, they were trying new things. There's, there's some classical influences. Wolf's guitar playing just getting better and better and better. Some real experimental tracks on that record. Very, very accessible. You know, songs like Living for Tonight and Midnight Mover. 
Um, you know, some, some, some unusual stuff like dogs on leads. Sure. But man, you know, the, the title track is an absolute freaking killer. That's why Metal Heart's my number two. Love that record. And just I want to comment. I want to make a comment here. All your favorite albums are also my favorite albums. This, we're talking about millimeters and centimeters. I love the whole catalog. Right. Here it comes. Number one for myself. The one, the only. You got your balls to the wall, man. That is the quintessential, the, the, the best, the most incredible riff or album in that period, in the late, in the early 80s. Balls to the Wall defines accepting who they are as a band, at least in my opinion they do. This album went gold in the US, it went gold in Canada, it did fantastic around the world. I don't even want to name all the tracks because I love all the tracks in the album. Very versatile, produced by Michael Wagner. Fantastic. Okay, I want to hear it. Well, Josh, what's well, your favorite yeah, album? <laughs> for me, the number one Accept album, the, 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 the record that really, you know, grabbed me and put Accept on the map for me personally, is Eat the Heat. Eat the Heat. Eat the Heat. The phenomenal. The mind-blowing. The one and only David Reese on vocals. I cannot say enough good things about this guy's voice. He is an absolute born a star. You know, his voice is, is everything yeah. any, any everything anyone could ask for in a vocalist. And this record, this record, Wolf was just absolutely, I, I could really tell he was enjoying, you know, the freedom of, of, a, new, of a versatile new vocalist. They were doing stuff they'd never done before. Uh, they were pushing it in a, you know, in a slightly more, or not just slightly, a lot in a more American hard rock direction, good for radio in the US. The songs were great. The writing was tight. It was wonderfully produced. Every, every inch of this record was well thought out. Uh, Dieter to Dirks really was getting the best out of them in the studio. This, this record should have been a multi-million seller, and it's an absolute crime that it wasn't. And you know what, Giles, just to conclude, that's what's so great about Accept. You know, I could pick Balls to the Wall as number one, you could pick Eat the Heat, and everybody has their own favorite album because they've got such a diverse catalog and they're just such great songwriters at the end of the day, through all their eras. Here at Sweden Rock 2016, we just performed last night and it was great. We had a lot of fun, we got a good crowd, good sound, everything was really good about it. It's an incredible festival. They're really, really professional and on the ball. The crowds are incredible, everything about it is so awesome. And right now, me and my friend Giles Livery, we just came back from the Lemmy stage, if I'm not wrong, and we just saw Megadeth set, and uh, it was incredible. Dave was on the ball, Chico rocked, the new drummer, which wasn't Chris Adler, I forgot the name of the guy that was drumming actually, but he was actually really good, I was impressed. It was really tight, in the material really well. The set list was awesome, they started with like the classics, towards the middle of the set, they played some new tracks from the Dystopia record, which was pretty cool. And they closed with some more classics, and uh, it was everything you would expect from a good Megadeth show, you know. And uh, the whole band was awesome, we were giving it everything, the audience was loving it. And uh, so far, so good, everything is good about this festival. Right now, we're getting ready to watch Queen on the main stage and King Diamond later. I'm particularly more excited to see Soy Work, but uh, hey, it's all good. All right, thanks very much, everybody. Your metal voice. How you doing? This is Giles Lavery and I'm here on the Metal Voice. King Diamond, man, what can I say? Wanted to see King since I was about 15 years old. Never had the opportunity. Finally, just got to see King Diamond. Blew me away. Amazing, amazing musicianship. Andy's one of my favorite guitar players. Played the whole Abigail album in its entirety. King sounded great, great stage production. A show not to miss, fantastic.
King Diamond, the freaking rule, man. Killer set list. We saw Queen last night, and uh, it was a really good set. I had a lot of fun, of course, seeing Brian May for me. It was like a childhood dream, and uh, he sounded incredible. He was just like everything you would expect from him, just really, really awesome in every sense. Ben sounded really good. Uh, Adam was really, really good. I was actually very positively surprised with it. He did all the right moves, he had all the right way to sing and act on the stage. I mean, he did his own way, which I think that's better than trying to copy somebody that he's not. And um, the whole band was good, so I had a really good time. How you doing? Here at Sweden Rock. Just checked out Foreigner. What a great set. I mean, it's all about this. it's all about the hits with a band like Foreigner. Um, obviously, uh, Mick Jones is the only surviving member, but it's you know it's been that way since 2006. So um, you know, I think we're a little past that at this point. Um, but yeah, what a great band. Kelly Hansen really, really been doing a good job now for for a decade. Uh, not a whole lot more to say except for Foreigner it was just an excellent, excellent show. Really good. Hey to a metal voice, it's the uh, morning after the final day of the Sweden Rock Festival. Um, last night's main act was the Michael Schenker Fest, um, featuring Gary Barden, Graham Bonnet, Robin McCauley. I might be a little biased, but I think Graham did fantastic last night, really good. Everyone sounded great, Michael sounded great, Gary Barden sounded great, Robin McCauley sounded great. A lot of songs that Michael hasn't played in a very, very long time, so a great event. Fantastic. Uh, it was also really, really good to see my friend Joey Belladonna. Um, and Anthrax, fantastic as always. Brilliant. You know, Scott Ian's got to be one of the best uh, rhythm players around. Uh, just a powerful, powerful set. Played some new stuff from For All, For All Kings. Uh, played one of my favorite songs, Medusa, favorite Anthrax songs, but all in all, business as usual for Anthrax, just brilliant, brilliant, fantastic.